All right, we're going to take a minute here to talk about the G-Terminal shutdown. Uh, this is an Infinity Controller, the Touch. This is a feature that's available on the old InStyle too, but primarily since we're putting in the Touch, this is what you're going to see nowadays. Uh, G-Terminal shutdown. Many have heard of it. Um, some know what it's about. Um, here's a basic way to think about it. This is your safety shutdown circuit. Purpose for, you know, a safety shutdown circuit would be, you know, a float switch in an attic, an, an easy trap switch, you know, a float such as this one here that we got hooked up, we're going to use it as a, an example. Um, years ago, for many years, we've always hooked up safety switches to either break power to the thermostat or to stop the outdoor condensing unit to come on. Um, here's the problem with that, is that it was great, it would shut it down and prevent damage. However, when the technician shows up five hours later, he can't see the problem and can't tell that what's actually happened. The beauty of this is, is that the Infinity, if this is set up right, which is very easy to set up, the Infinity will log this for us. So we come back to the job four hours later, we're able to tell that the G-terminal tripped. So we know that whatever's hooked up to that safety circuit is tripped. Um, on the other side of the importance of this is why it's so important to do this is by the factory. I'm going to go in and show you right quick. I'll be a little fast where it's at right now, but it's in the advanced settings. From the factory, this feature is disabled. So if you do your due diligence as an installer or service guy hooking up this float, and you wire it in like it's supposed to be wired, what you're going to find is that nothing's going to happen when it actually opens up because... G terminal, if you can see there, it says no, and that's default. So you'll come through and hook this thing up the way I'm going to show you, and then a month later, you know, the ceiling comes down because no one turned this on. Um, I say ceiling, you know, if we got an application up in an attic or something. So first of all, I'm going to show you where it hooks up on the board because it kind of confuses a little bit of people. Um, again, in the past, we've always hooked up floats. We've got a two-wire float. We always just hook them up and break our. You know, here's a typical float very standard we're not doing that on the infinity on the infinity we're actually going to go in here between the r terminal that little light's a little bright so it's hard to see it but that's our r that would normally be our r for our thermostat the other terminal this is hooked to is g r and g if this is not set up meaning you have not turned this on this feature in the controller nothing will work it will not shut down if you have multiple floats in the system you just wire them in a series to r and g after you get them hooked up to RNG, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically show you that nothing's going to happen here. You all know that that's an open circuit, or just a closed circuit on this terminal. So if this float trips, nothing's going to happen. This thing's just going to keep on ticking. And its water's going to flow over the pan and it very well can create some damage. So right now, you know that I did not enable this. It's still in default mode is off. And we're unhooked from this board down here. So, real quickly, I'll hook it back up. We're going to enable it, and I'll show you what will happen if it's enabled properly. There we go. We got an extra set of hands in here. Unless you guys are really wondering how I'm holding that camera. And talking. So, good stuff. Again, RNG, that's all we're hooking up to here. So now we're going to go back up. Thank you, sir. We're going to go back up here, and we're going to go into the service. Service hat, which you press and hold for 15 seconds to get into the installer settings. It'll turn green under your finger. If you're still. If you're like me and you wiggle around, it might take a while. Set up. Furnace. Scroll down a screen. G-Terminal. It's going to give us some options. Once we enable yes, the fan, it's going to give us an option of what we want to do with it. Do we want to turn the fan on? Do we want to alert? Or do we want to shut down? We want to shut down. If we were in fan, the fan speed's going to run low if that circuit opens or closes. So we're going to set it to shut down. And now it's asking if we want this circuit to be normally closed or normally open. What's a safety circuit? They're always normally closed. So it comes default normally closed, which is cool. So that works okay. So we're turned on yes. We're going to shut down the equipment because we don't want the customer on vacation and this thing running an alert on the screen. We want it to shut down. So we're good there. We're normally closed. So we hit save. Now we go back and we're done. So now we're on the main screen. Now perhaps we go back down here to the same situation right here. There's our circuit. 
Um, I was just going to open the switch for you, but it's easier. I'll just pull the wire off. So now, with this being disabled, RNG is broke. It's now a normally open circuit. If we go in and we try to run this equipment, it's going to come up with a G terminal shutdown, meaning that that thermostat it won't allow it to run. There's time delays on these, so it could be up to five minutes. So this might be a, a long test to kind of show you here. But it's going to pop up on the screen. There'll be a, a, a box right there. Yeah, took a little less time than we thought. System fault. Auxiliary G shut down. Nothing can happen right now. Now if this drains and this circuit closes, that G terminal will go away. Now we can see it didn't do anything, it went away. Now, how do I know that that actually happened? You know? So now, the cool thing, this is the what the beauty of this is. We go back into service. And again, this might have been four hours ago. And all the water drained away from that pipe that's outside. So now, there's no water up in the ceiling or whatever. We can go into service information. Last 10 system events. It's loading everything. See if you can get to where you can see that. Auxiliary G shutdown input right there. So what it's telling us is that a few minutes ago it shut down due to that. So I know that I have a drain backing up. How I can't even give you the level of importance that that is. So you've got to make sure that these are hooked up right. That's the whole purpose behind it. There's other reasons to hook up the G terminal for airflow for dehumidifiers and things like that. If you have questions, just reach out to me and ask, and I can tell you how to hook it up for that application you're looking for. But um, don't trust any float switch, meaning operationally check it, make sure they're wired in. If you see it going in the cabinet, and oh yeah, my float switch must be hooked up, pull the door off. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of times you'll find guys don't know how to hook up float switches, so you'll just find the wire tucked into the equipment, not doing anything. Um, this is critical that you hook this up this way, so that it's done properly. This is on the Infinity Carrier systems. On other systems... We still go standard and break our terminal to the thermostat or to the outdoors. Um, sticking it standard, that's not to be, you know, discussed here in this situation. But nevertheless, this is the proper way we want to hook up that G terminal shutdown for all Infinity stats, such as these correct here, and the in style, which is the white one that's a little longer. So if you're going to install a float on a unit that's been in for eight years, you'll have to enable this. If you don't enable it, the float you just installed will do nothing, except setting the pan and look pretty. Other than that, thank you guys anytime. Give me a question. Peace.